Uh, this article in The Australian, you, you can't make this stuff up. Wise comments from the Chinese ambassador at a recent function in Canberra to be careful of those who threaten you because they might do it again. He's talking about Japan here. And in the same speech, Beijing's top diplomat in Australia attacked the AUKUS agreement. And, of course, you know, they've been presiding over economic coercion when it comes to our coal. Um, Christy, with friends like China, who needs enemies? Or Sophie, sorry, with friends like China, who needs enemies? Well, I don't think he's doing himself any favours at all by bagging Japan. I think that's a very silly move. But what I will say is there is some hope that Australia is trying to mend the way with China. But, Caleb, let's not be fooled here. There's an awful long way to go. We have the Australian journalist Cheng Lei still locked up in Beijing with virtually no explanation, or really is no explanation, as to why she remains mm. in prison. Uh, she's been in prison for a couple of years now. Uh, we've obviously had those trade issues with Beijing. There's many issues that still, uh, you know, with the tariffs as, as well. There's a lot of issues that remain with China. So let's not be fooled here that things are rosy very quickly. I think there's an awful long way to go. But uh, as for the Chinese ambassador making these comments to today, I didn't think that was incredibly... Uh, an incredibly wise move, Caleb. <laughs> They're good at bullying China. Now, Christy, let's talk about The Voice. Anthony Albanese has uh, really stepped up the blame game. He's essentially saying now that if you vote no, you'll embarrass us on the global stage. Here's what he said today. It would send a bad message, re reconciliation, but it would also send a bad message in the way that Australia is perceived internationally. Uh, this is an opportunity to unite the nation, a chance to move Australia forward together to show that we're a mature nation. Well, I mean, at best, he sounds like a toddler who's trying to get his way, and I suppose you could argue at worst it's bullying. What do you think, Christy? I think Labor is trying to, you're correct, is trying to bully Australians uh, by using highly emotive language and using the referendum on The Voice as a catch-all to move people into two camps, supporters of reconciliation and non-supporters of reconciliation. Uh, if you are not a supporter of The Voice, and let's face it, at the moment it's a thought bubble, it is no detail, no objective proposal to the Australian people in terms of how it is going to impact legislation in Australia by a group of unelected people appointed um, by the government or by Indigenous Australia. That's fine, but that, that is the real fact of the issue. And working very, very hard through use of emotive language to move people into two camps ignores the fact that there are great deal many of Australians in Australia who are supporters of reconciliation, mm. who work hard to close the gap, who are asking the government questions as to what framework the referendum options are going to be in before they vote for it. The attack on Peter Dutton for doing what he's supposed to do, which is to hold the government to account and ensure Australians get answers to questions on what they're expected to vote for is very, very, very poor form by Labor. And guess what? Governing's hard, isn't it? <laughs> you have to answer questions, <laughs> particularly Funny. when you're seeking to change the Constitution. Funny Someone needs that. to ask them. Exactly. I mean, and Graham Richardson uh, on Sky last night said he didn't support the voice. I mean, is, is Albanese potentially alienating traditional Labor voters, Sophie, with this racial identity politics? I think uh, what he's saying at the moment basically can be interpreted as if you support the voice, uh, as Christy said, you're all for reconciliation. And if you don't, you're against it. It's, mm. it's pretty simple. And I think uh, voters are being treated like fools. They don't really understand what this is. And they're just meant to go along with the whole vibe of the thing. <laughs> and I think if Labor is going to go down that road, it's a dangerous road and I don't think it will get through. I think there's a lot of people who are sceptical about this 
and a lot of people who have absolutely no idea what it means and others thinking this is just another layer of bureaucracy that Australians do not need. How is this going to help Indigenous Australians in communities, Caleb, that I will say I bet a lot of Australians have never even stepped foot into and would have no clue what's going out there. It's not just about these voters in Fitzroy or Newtown or these yuppie suburbs in suburbia. Uh, this is about people out in real Australia that are facing serious issues and what is the voice going to do for them? And I think that's what a lot of people still don't know, Caleb. Exactly. And we've yet to hear anything about anything that will do anything practical for anyone. And we just get stuck on this merry-go-round of nice fuzzy things that feel nice but don't actually achieve anything. Christy, Sophie, thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Caleb.